Okay, good morning and welcome. Today's uh, Tuesday, the 17th day of Tevis, and we continue and we actually finish the chapter 12 in Tanya. Let's begin with Tzedakah. Tzedakah hastens the redemption. So in this chapter 12, the Alta Rebbe discusses the Benini, the ideal Jew, the Jew that is in full control of what he thinks, what he does, what he says, and what he does. Except that he didn't change his heart. He still has an animal soul that desires not good things. But um, but it doesn't come, it doesn't let this desire to be actualized, not even thinking about it. Thoughts can come, involuntary thoughts can come to him. But as soon as he realizes that it's another good thought, he pushes it away right away. And that's the Benini, that's the, the intermediate person. And the Alter Rebbe today is going to explain that controlling thought, speech, and action to be a good Jew is not only when it comes between you and God, but also when it comes between men and men. You know, there's a story once uh, there were Hasidim that came to, to an end. They were sitting there and talking and a simple Jew walked in there and he saw this Hasidim sitting and talking and he told them that you are very careful what you put into your mouth. You also have to be careful what you take out of your mouth. So what you put into your mouth is, of course, when it comes to mitzvahs to eat kosher, people are very careful. They're going to look for the best hashgacha that they can find. They're very careful what they put into the mouth. But a real bainani is not only careful what he takes into the mouth, but he has to be careful also what he takes out of the mouth. The way you speak to people, the way you interact with people, with your wife, with your husband, with your children. So this is the Alter Rebbe saying in this end of this chapter <clears throat> that the bainani is in, in every area, in every area, not to get angry, to control the anger. Obviously, sometimes things makes us angry, but to know how to control it. And later on in the chapters, the Alter Rebbe is going to give us tips on how to deal with those things. But here, the Alter Rebbe describes what is the Benini. But in the beginning of today's lesson, the Alter Rebbe also continues what we learned yesterday. Yesterday, we learned there are two things what helps the Benini to be in control. Number one, this is the nature, the way God created us, that Moyach Shalit Alalev. God created us in a way that our mind controls our emotions. That's our nature. That's the difference between a human and an animal. An animal cannot control. A human being has the ability to control his emotions and not, not to act upon his emotions, and also to change the feelings by understanding. So that's number one, that go, works for the Benini to help him. Number two, Dal Tehaba said, is the fact that light has a greater power than darkness. A little bit of light does away with a lot of darkness. And therefore, when the Benini has the struggle between the godly soul and the animal soul, what is the animal soul? It's a very selfish soul that desires to become, to do everything what, what, what you want. The godly soul is the reality, the true reality, the reality of God. So as soon as you focus on the godly soul and the true reality, this will definitely, a little bit of light, a little bit of focus on Chachma, the wisdom of godly wisdom that is in the godly soul, 
is able to overcome the, the other side. <coughs> and then Alter Rebbe said that this is also the, the importance of prayer in the morning, the prayer in general, but especially in the morning. When you daven, when you pray, you're connecting. You're elevating yourself. You're connecting to Hashem. You're thinking about the greatness of the, this. As if, if you pay attention to what you're praying, and you realize you're focusing on the greatness of Hashem, the way He created the, the heaven and the earth and everything, and how everything is run by Hashem. And then you go on to the blessings of the Shema, where it describes the how the greatest spiritual levels, the angels, they're all nullified to Hashem. They all seek to be included in God. And then you say how Hashem loves us and he brought everything to us, the greatest levels. You say Shema Yisrael. All of this leads a person to the feeling of connecting to Hashem, love of Hashem. And at that moment, at the time of prayer, the Benini can have feelings almost like a tzaddik. Because the tzaddik really completely eliminated the evil. It doesn't have any de desires to, to do evil. During the prayer, the Benini has a little sense of that also. <clears throat> but then right after prayer, it go it's gone. That excitement in, in, sp in, in spirituality, after you finish davening, you pack up, you have to fill in, you go home. Now you're ready for a nice, delicious breakfast. All the material desires come back. So that's what the Benini is. However, Dalta Rebbe goes on to explain that even after davening, you have the remnants of what you accomplish during prayer. The remnants remains in you, and that helps you throughout the day. In addition to that, also you have the natural hidden love that is in the Jew. So that's why the importance of prayer, you start a day with praying, and you really focus on prayer, you, you've at least a little bit of the of, of the prayer as much as you can. That helps you <clears throat> to throughout the day that you should have uh, a reminder what is the right thing to do. So let's see inside what Alter Rebbe says. <clears throat> says the Alter Rebbe. However, the impression retained in his mind from meditation during prayer on God's greatness. And the natural love and fear of God hidden in the right part of his heart, this enables him, enables the Benini to overcome the evil. To prevail over the, and dominate the evil the animal soul's craving. And what does it mean to dominate the craving? Not that they shouldn't have a desire, but not to execute the desire, not to bring it to reality, as he will explain. This is preventing, preventing the evil from gaining the su supremacy and dominion over the city. The city is the body. As we mentioned, this is the two kings fighting over the city, the godly soul and the animal soul, the fighting over the body. And carrying out its, its craving from potential to the actual by clothing itself in the organs of the body in actual speech or deed. That the Benini does not allow. Furthermore, says the Alter Rebbe, even in the mind alone, with respect to sinful thought, that also, says the Alter Rebbe, the Benini controls. The evil has not the dominion and power to cause him, God forbid, to think such thoughts consciously. In other words, consciously, it doesn't do it. There, there, there is the involuntarily, 
uh, thoughts that come to a person, and that the Benoni does have this the problem. It enters his mind because he's not a tzaddik. It needn't completely transform the evil. But once he realizes something is wrong, he immediately jumps into action and doesn't, doesn't allow to do it. Meaning, to cause the mind to accept willingly, God forbid, the evil thought that rises of its own accord from the heart to the mind, as explained above, that the Benin doesn't allow. Hello. Instead, immediately upon the thoughts rising to the mind, he, the Benini, he thrusts it aside as it, uh, as it were with both hands and averts his mind from it. In uh, the instant, he realizes that this is an evil thought. This is, for example, a person, let's say, for example, a person is, doesn't realize that it's Shabbos. He wakes up in the morning and, and, and he starts doing something which is forbidden Shabbos, but then as soon as he realizes it's Shabbos, he's going to jump. He's going to say, oh, I, I, I can't do it. It's Shabbos. The Bainan in every thought is like that. Everything which is not godly. And of course, for that, we have to know what is allowed, what is not, as, as mentioned before. That is why we need to learn the Kitzur Shulchan Aruch, the court of Jewish law, to know what a Jew, or how a Jew is supposed to live. Continues the Alter Rebbe. The Benini will refuse to accept it even as a subject for mere conscious thought. He will certainly not entertain the notion of acting on it, God forbid, or even speaking of it. That's for sure he's not going to do. Because he who willingly indulges in such thoughts is deemed a Russia, a wicked person at that moment. Well, the Benini is never wicked, even for a single moment. So obviously then, the Benini would not willingly entertain evil thoughts. Continues the Alter Rebbe, what we said in the, what we said in the beginning today, that a Benini is not only to be a tzaddik between him and God, but also that he's do, he does right between man and fellow man. So in matters between man and his fellow man, and his fellow man. As soon as there rises from his heart to his mind any animosity or hatred, God forbid, or jealousy, anger, or grudge, or and the like, the Benini is in control, and he acts like a Benini, which it means that he doesn't do it, he doesn't accept that those thoughts. He will bar them from his mind and will, refusing even to think of them. On the contrary, his mind will prevail over and dominate the feelings of his heart to do the exact opposite of that which the heart desires. Which means that even if a person does to him something bad, he will do the opposite and do something good. Namely, to conduct himself towards his fellow with the quality of kindness, as opposed to, to, as opposed to the quality of severity, where hatred and anger originate. And to display towards him, towards his fellow, disproportionate love in suffering from him 
to the furthest extreme. Without being provoked into anger, God forbid. Or to take revenge in kind, God forbid, even without anger. But on the contrary, to repay offenders with favor. As the taught in the Zoya, that we should learn from the example of Yosef, Yosef's conduct with his brothers. And he repaid them for the suffering they brought upon him with kindness and favor. So this is what we are reading in the Torah portion these days. <clears throat> the story with Yosef. That we, learned, we finished last week. The brothers sold him as a slave. They wanted to kill him originally. And yet, what did he do? Once he became king and they he realized and they came to him down to Egypt. Instead of paying, he could have he could have paid it back, he could have taken revenge, but he didn't. And he said that whatever happens is not what you think happened. You thought bad, but God meant something else. And he saw he saw the goodness of everything. He saw the reality from a godly perspective. And whatever happens is from Hashem. So he, and, and therefore, even when the brothers did something bad to him, he repaid them with good. He fed them. Not only that, when Yaakov passed away, their father, when he passed away, they went, they took him out to Israel to be buried, and they came back to Egypt. And the brothers thought that he now is going to take revenge. He thought They thought that as long as Yaakov was alive, he was nice to them, but now he's going to take revenge. So they went to him and they said, that the father, before he passed away, instructed us to ask you to forgive. And Yaakov never did. He never really suspected Yosef for that he's not going to forgive them. But uh, they said, but they lied. They said that because, you know, for the sake of peace, for the sake of safety, they went and they told them that's what their father did. So the Torah says that Yosef cried when he spoke to them. And of course, he told them, don't worry. It's not you meant bad, but God meant good. Everything was from Hashem. And, and, and that, that's why I'm here now the king and I'm able to provide to you and to the rest of the world. But he cried. Why did he cry? One of the commentators is saying why Yosef cried is because Yosef told them all along that this is not there, that this is the actions that would happen, that he's, he doesn't look at things that way. He looks at things the way it happens from Hashem. But they fail to internalize this. And that's why he cried. He says, brothers, don't you see the reality? The reality is everything is from Hashem. And that's the Benini is working and understanding everything is from Hashem and things what happen the way he acts to, towards other people comes from a deep love even if people did something bad to them there was a story in the time of the Alter Rebbe was a chassid that uh, he had um, he had a business was a wealthy person his name was uh, Absender Ben Zalman he was very wealthy and one of the, his competitors went and, and uh, he reported to the government falsely that he's, do, he's dealing, he's doing business with not uh, good, not kosher um, merchandise. And um, 
As a result, Reb Sender lost everything, became very poor. It took a long time, but eventually he got back, he got, he got back up on his feet. And later on, that person that reported on him to the government, he became very sick. And an absender came to visit him. And everybody was surprised when he comes to visit him. And an absender left an envelope with 400 rubles to give him. And this is exactly what Yosef did. Paying bad, paying good for bad things. Later on, Reb Sender passed away and the Alter Rebbe came to pay a shiva call to his father. His father was still alive. His father was Reb Zalman. So the Alter Rebbe told Reb, his father, what are you worried about your son? He's already in Gan Eden. He's already in heaven. And he told him, he told him, you send, your son, Sender, embarrassed me. I say, what does it mean? Is when I when he went, he said, Al Tareb says, when I went to the higher chambers, I saw your son there in a very high chamber in heaven. And I asked him, How did you manage to get here? And he told me, Rebbe, Rebbe, you, you're gonna ask me such a question. It says, Tzedakah Tarimim Goy. Tzedaka elevates a nation. So that's a dhaka that he did, the things that you do out of the goodness of your heart, this elevates a person in this world and the next world. So this is the end of today's shir, the end of chapter 12, and let, we'll see you tomorrow. All the best.